Hey everybody, so recently at the track, uh, someone that I met who's an excellent driver really encouraged me to look into Hans devices. And for those of you unfamiliar with the term, Hans stands for head and neck restraint. And uh, what this uh, device is meant to do is to prevent your head from pitching too far forward and detaching from your spine in, in the event of an accident. Because, well, you know, your neck is not used to having the extra weight of your head plus a helmet. Um, so, Anyhow, uh, I decided to take their advice and look around. And if I had only had the Schroth Quick Fits, which I run in the wagon, then I would have many options. However, because the M2 Competition seat does not support the Schroth Quick Fits, I'm limited to a device that works with the stock three-point seat belt. And for that, there's really only one product on the market that does that and that's the Simpson Hybrid S, and specifically the S, because there are a lot of Simpson Hybrid products, but only the S model is compatible with three points. And that's kind of a bummer, because the S is easily twice as expensive as the cheapest hybrid. So let's take a look at this device and, you know, how it works and how to put it on and, you know, what you can do with it. Well, I think the first thing to start off with is really just the body of it itself. You can see there's this uh, carbon fiber structure here. And so, you know, it, it butts up against your shoulders and goes down around the upper part of your back. Um, and this is what, you know, kind of braces the whole thing up against your body um, and provides the support such that, uh, you know, it doesn't allow your helmet to pitch forward. Um, if we look over here, we can see there's this sliding tether. And so if you were to undo these four Phillips screws, you could swap the tether to, let's say, a different size one if you needed to. Or uh, in this case, this tether has... Um, the uh, end links for the uh, uh, the Simpson Quick uh, disconnect system. Uh, so if you wanted to change to one that had uh, you know uh, the connects for just a regular Hans post, then you would have to change this tether via undoing these screws. Um, if we look on the side here, like how does this thing really work? Well, you can see these two straps here, and what these do is you can see that you know I can pull it and it only lets me extend a certain so far. And so what that will do is that will, when this is attached to your helmet, it'll prevent your helmet from going, and your head, from going too far forward such that, uh, you know, it, it, uh, you risk uh, injuring your neck really badly from the uh, inertia of a, of a collision. So that's really how this works. And uh, the strap down here also limits how much your head can bobble side to side. So if, you know, your head were to rock this way, for example, this becoming this length here would per stop it at a certain point. So not only does this give you some forward movement protection, but it also gives you your head some side protection as well. If we look on the inside of it, you can see we have this uh, comfort pad here. And they just use, you know, regular hook and loop to, uh, uh, to, to attach it here. And you know, Simpson sells a bunch of different types of pads depending on uh, the shape of the comfort that you want. So, uh, you know, good job on their product planners for upsell uh, and uh, retrofit sales after the fact. Looking down at the fastening mechanism, you can see that there's just one simple buckle down here at the bottom that just clips in and that's how it secures yourself. And there's also a, uh, a breakaway rating here, which is uh, 16 kilonewtons, so very, uh, very strong. Um, and interestingly enough, this buckle reminds me an awful lot of the... Uh, Cobra buckles that you see in a lot of uh, you know duty belts. Um, although the Cobra buckle has a higher breakaway rating of uh, 18 kilonewtons, so I'm not sure why they went with this style versus this, which is I don't know. I've never seen this type of buckle before, but Cobras are immensely popular, so uh, maybe that's something they'll consider in the future or changing to that buckle. And then looking further down, we have these two rings, which are called the. Uh, SAS straps, and if you are using a uh, multi-point harness, you know, like five, six point, and everything buckles into a, uh, a center buckle down here, um, these are supposed to uh, go into some of those other buckles to give this uh, harness overall even more support. And uh, to kind of demonstrate how this would work is uh, if we imagine that, you know, the chest buckle here is uh, the actual harness buckle, what you would do is you would take this ring, slip it over over the uh, the buckle, and then you would go ahead and then fasten that in. Now it doesn't work, you know, on this demonstration here, but this is the concept of, of what it does. So it ties in your your Simpson Hybrid Hans device 
um, into the actual harness of the car to give it even more support. I was honestly surprised that this device is as simple as it is. I thought there'd be a lot more adjusting to this, but really no, you just, you know, put this on, you know, snap the buckle together, adjust the length to, uh, you know, so that this is snug around your chest. And that's really it as far as putting it on yourself. Now to connect the uh, Hans device or Simpson hybrid to your helmet, you're going to have to install the anchors for it. And the anchors will go in this section of the helmet. This is an SA2015 helmet which means the anchor is already built in on some of the older SA-2010s which shouldn't be able to be used anymore because that's, that standard's uh, more than 10 years old now. Um, they didn't necessarily have this nut built in so you may have had to drill it yourself. But anyways, the uh, Simpson Hybrid uh, S, you can choose two different uh, anchor mounts. You can get this uh, Simpson Quick Release style. So you can see it's got this pull string on here and then you can see this detent just gets pulled and that's what releases the uh, Hans device or the Simpson hybrid tether from the helmet. And this connects with an M6 screw into the uh, helmet there. So, um, you know, I decided to get the quick disconnect version um, instead of just the regular Hans post. It doesn't really matter. It's kind of, you know, a preferential thing. But anyways, you just go ahead and put that on the helmet and then go ahead and screw it in. And um, Simpson says, that the uh, angle of this uh, slot should be about angled down about 40 degrees and the easiest way to tell that is if you look at the Simpson logo and it's level with the you know uh, flat of the helmet then that should be at the appropriate uh, the appropriate angle and uh, you know I, I find this a little bit funny that they say oh yeah tighten this till it gets you know a little bit snug and then give it a quarter turn like in my opinion anything that's safety related like this really needs to have a torque spec and thankfully when I looked up the torque specs for Hans Post they say uh, 30 inch pounds or uh, 3.4 newton meters so I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, torque device here and uh, torque that to spec and uh, for this screw that comes with the Simpson hybrid you can either use a 5 30 seconds or a 4 millimeter hex. So now that the anchor is on there you can see you know you would pull this down and you can put the uh, tether in there and then release it till it's locked in. Um, on these pull strings on the end is some hook and loop or Velcro and uh, you know uh, Simpson also provides you with a uh, corresponding other side with some you know sticky back so that you can um, you know mount these to your helmet like so so it's easy to grab pull and release the tethers when you need to. So now you can see you know after you have the anchor on you can take the tether from your uh, Simpson Hybrid S and put that in there and let it go to lock it. And this is really how it uh, keeps you from moving, right? You can see if your head were to try and move forward, then that tether would stop it. And this is what's going to uh, protect your head and prevent you from getting that neck injury in case of an incident. So I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, thing on now. And um, it can be a little bit funky to do that. There's a couple ways you can do it. One is, you know, pre-attaching the helmet to the uh, hybrid device uh, and then go ahead and putting that whole thing on as one assembly. So to do that I'd go ahead and put my arm through one end of the harness, get the helmet on my head, and then go ahead and get my other arm through the other side of the harness and uh, buckle it up. Make sure that I have my poles uh, free and clear. And then the second method is to go ahead and put your helmet and the uh, hybrid device on separately and uh, then go ahead and attach the tethers from there. And this can vary in its difficulty because like, you are doing this completely blind. Um, so you really have to feel for it, but there you go. You can see I did that it wasn't too terrible. But now you can see that these tethers, they stop the helmet, they stop my head from bobbing forward too much. And the, uh, the, the structure of the Simpson Hybrid S, you know, braces it against my upper back to prevent that movement. And I also have, you know, bob bobbing side to side uh, protection as well. Now, of course, I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to set up these tether links uh, more appropriately to make sure that the, I have the movement I need and absolutely nothing else. Um, and uh, Simpson says, you know, you should only have about, you know, two and a quarter inches of forward movement. Um, actually forward movement, not dipping down like this, but rather kind of going like that, like a chicken, um, to, to make sure that your head stays constrained. So that's the next step for me.